Let's make our trees go strong and big by adding tree generation to Minecraft. All right, Fast Back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom tree generation and custom trees to Minecraft. And for that, we're going to need, well, a couple of things. First of all, in the mod blocks class, we're going to add both the sapling as well as the leaves. For the leaves, we're going to copy over the redwood planks because we once again have to make this a anonymous class, sadly. So this is going to be the leaves block. So we're just going to change this to the leaves block right here. And this is, of course, going to copy over from the oak leaves in this case. And we're just going to change the name here, of course, leaves. And then right here as well, leaves, there you go. And the flammability here is actually 60 and the spread is 30. That should be the normal spread for leaves. And then we also need a sapling. So for that, we're just going to take the stripped wood. That's fine. And this is going to be the red wood underscore sapling. And of course, here as well, redwood underscore sapling and this is a sapling block now this one actually takes in a tree grower in the beginning here we're actually gonna let's not make this null let's keep it like so that we have this as an error here just so that we know that there is an error and this is going to be the oak sapling so we have to make a tree grower no worries there at all we're going to do that and for that we're actually going to make a new package in our tutorial mod package right click package and this is going to be the world package so now we're starting to go into world generation because spawning a tree is actually also world generation interestingly enough and in the world package we're actually going to need another package which is called the features and then inside of there we're going to make another package called tree and right in here we're going to have a red wood tree grower would you look at that that's great and this is going to extend the abstract tree grower, exactly this one. And then we're just going to hover over this, implement the method, the get configured feature for the time being, returning null is totally fine. And then we can just make a new redwood tree grower. And then we're done with the sapling and also with the mod blocks class. Now, of course, we need to return something and you can see that we need to return a configured feature. So inside of the features package, right click new Java class mod configured features. And this is going to be a very interesting class. So this one is going to be a little bit different because what we're going to have is we're actually going to have to make a register method, a private static. And then this is FC extends feature configuration, configured feature, FC, question mark, register register that's the name of the method with a string name and a configured feature fc question mark called configured feature this is a crazy method of course as you can see all of the code is of course available to you in the description below github repository or individual gists and we're going to return the return registry dot register built in registries dot configured feature with the name and the configured feature so this basically just registers every configured feature that we are going to make in here. This is not always necessary. However, it is a better practice to actually do this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy over the configured feature. Once again, the code is available to you. I'm going to explain each line individually. So this is the entire configured feature for the redwood tree. Now, this is the feature that makes the tree spawn, meaning the tree, when we have a sapling, we, for example, bone meal it, and then it grows. That is this. This is not yet the spawning of the tree. We're going to do that in just a moment. So this is a configured feature, as you can see. You know, we're called Redwood, and we're going to register this. Fair, fair enough, right? This is called Redwood. And we need to call feature.tree.configured. And this is one thing that is crazy, and we're going to see this in the next couple of tutorials, when we're actually talking about other features, basically, they're going to have we're going to have this feature class which basically has a lot of stuff and then we're also going to talk about the features class so with an s at the end and that will have even more features which is going to be a great resource for you to just basically just take a look at how this works so configured simply means that we're one the tree feature right so if we click on this we see that this is a tree feature right and if we say configured then this turns into a configured feature should be fairly self-explanatory in that moment and then we need to give it all of this craziness. What is this? It's actually not too crazy. The tree configuration builder, if I hover over this, you can see that it takes in 
It takes in a block state provider, then a trunk placer, two more block state providers, a foliage placer, and then a feature size. So the first block state provider actually provides the block state for the logs. So this is whatever the logs should be. You can, in theory, replace this with anything. You could make diamond trees if you would want to. You would just have to put in blocks.diamond.defaultBlockState. That's literally it. That's that all that there is to it. The, straight, the trunk placer that is being passed in here as the second parameter is how big the tree is going to be. So if I actually go into this, sadly, the parameters are not mapped here. That's a bit of a shame, but this is basically the minimum size. And then there's like two random elements. So the tree is at least, I think, eight big, and then it can grow four higher and then maybe even three higher. So it's there's a bit of randomness in here. That is the idea of the trunk placer. We then have the simple state provider. Once again, a block state provider that provides the leaves. And then we have to provide the sapling. And then in the blob foliage placer, this is how the leaves are basically managed. So we can actually go into this and can see if I click on this and press control H, you can see that there's different foliage placers. If you want completely custom things, you will have to make your own. And this is very much more complicated than basically just copying over this. This is actually like a good chunk in Java. So once again, if you want like completely custom trees that look completely custom, you will have to know Java for that. There's just no other way. And then the two layers feature size, I am honestly not 100% sure what this is. This is something to do with the spawning of the actual tree. However, I, I am, got to be honest, I'm a little bit rusty on the um, actual tree configuration in the world gen because the one thing that has to be said about world gen is that it is very complicated. Um, and I'm not just saying that, oh, it's very complicated. It's like, no, it's, it is very complicated, especially once again, getting everything perfectly like you want it to is sometimes going to be very hard. Whatever the case may be, this is now done. We can now make the two other classes that we're going to need. All right, so now the configured feature is done. So let's actually return this right here. So we can say mod configured features dot redwood, and we will get an error, but that's no issue because what we can do is we can cast it to this because it's actually expecting a tree configured feature as the first uh, parameter here or as the first basically uh, generic but because we know that this is going to return that we're going to be fine with this and this is going to be done now this is done and then we can go into the features class and make actually we go into the world package right click package and a new gen so this is world gen and this is going to be the mod tree generation so this is where the actual generation will take place and then in the world we're going to make the world generation events class which is also going to be interesting so in the mod tree generation first of all i'm going to copy over what we're going to need and also explain once again of course everything available to you so we're going to make a resource key with this event this means that we're basically getting the key for the actual biome that is loaded right now then we're going to say okay let's just get the types of biomes so we just want the di biome dictionary type of the biome and then we're going to basically take a look at whether or not this is planes. Meaning that whatever we put into here is only going to spawn in planes. Once again, if you want to filter for something else, Java knowledge. Just think about it. You have the resource key right here for the, for the biome, right? We can take a look at this, for example. Key. What do we have? We have the resource location. We have the registry name. So in theory, you could just make new if statements or a switch statement, even if you would want to, and call different and then basically spawn your trees differently if you would want to. The th stuff that's in here is going to be mostly the same, probably. So let's actually, I mean, the formatting here is going to be <laughs> freaked up whatever we're going to do, because this is just a way very long, there's a very long class name. So first of all, we need a the list of supplier of configured features, which basically is all of the features for the vegetal decoration. Because trees are vegetal decoration, this is why we're going to get the features of that particular generation step. And then we're just going to add a new supplier here of this configured feature redwood. And then we have to say dot decorated. And then we have to can basically specify how is this going to spawn. So first of all, it's going to spawn here height map with tree threshold squared. Once again, this is um, pretty crazy, right? So as you can see, if I, I can basically take a look at this and can see, hey, so this is going to take the height map floor. So this is the feature decorator dot height map dot configured with the new height map with the ocean floor. So as you can see, pretty craziness. Um, this is what I found to be the best thing. Basically, once again, play around with it a little bit. You have a bunch of decorators here that you can take. Just try it out. And also, this is the features class. And you can always take a look at, and if you scroll up here, you can see there are always the 
actual tree generation, as you can see, for the actual trees. You can take a look at those and you can see they get very, very, very long, right? So that is what I mean. World generation is quite crazy, but everything in vanilla is available in the feature. In the features class, highly, highly recommend just going through it and taking a look at that as well. So then we have also the feature decorator count extra. So this is basically just the frequency with extra chance decorator configuration. Crazy name just means that at least two of those will spawn per chunk. Uh, and then there's a 10% chance of a second one spawning. I believe that that's chunk based. And basically what you can do is something like you could put a zero in here, you know, make it 1% and then you have a tree that is very, very rare. So that's the general idea. However, we're going to keep it like this. That's totally fine. And this whole method will now need to be called in the world generation events class. Now, this is actually going to be fairly straightforward. This is going to have a public static void called mod world generation. And this is the final biome loading event called event. And what it's going to do is just going to call mod tree generation dot generate trees and pass in the event. Now, we also need a add mod dot dot event bus subscriber with mod ID tutorial with mod ID tutorial mod dot mod ID. And then above it, add the subscribe event. Very important. This has to match, otherwise it will not work. That's very, very important. Otherwise, that is actually it. Both the sapling as well as the actual generation in the world will actually work. What we however do need to do is you know make sure that the sapling and the leaves all look correct and all are fine. So we have to go into our setup client method right here and actually call this as well. So let's basically just copy this twice here and we're just going to say this is the leaves and then this is the sapling. Oh, sapling. There you go. So this is it for that. And then we of course also need to add the block stays Jason's, but no worries there. That's actually all not too crazy. Just take a look at the block stays Jason here. So the leaves completely normal blocks. Same with the sapling is a completely normal block stage Jason. Nothing too crazy here. Let's actually immediately add the translation because otherwise I will forget it again because, well, I mean, that does tend to happen. There it is. And then the block model as well as the item models. So let's copy this over. This is, of course, also all available to you. The sapling is a cross pattern once again. So this is what we've already seen in the in the orchid before. And then the item models just point back to the block models as well, except for actually the sapling actually points to the normal redwood sapling. This is exactly the same that we've seen with the orchid as well. So let's just add a both of the block extras here as well, the leaves and the sapling as well. There you go. Once again, of course, also available to you. And now everything has been added. Don't forget to make a new world with this as well, because of course we mess with the world generation. Let's see if it works. All right, we found something in Minecraft and let's see. So first of all, the redwood sapling and redwood leaves have been added, so that all works fine and they look great. So let's get some bone meal out here and let's just see if we can actually spawn this. And there it is, a big redwood tree. And now we just need to locate a biome, a plains biome here. And then we should be able to also see them in the world. There they are easily enough. This is also why I spawn them in the plains biome, because then they're the easiest to basically see. So that's actually how easy it is. Now, yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much all that there is to it. Now, because we've already added the logs to our logs tag, to the logs tag here, the leaves do not despawn. This is very important. You can take a look at the, well, basically the, just custom wood tutorial one more time if you want to see this, but this is just this tag basically. All right, and that is pretty much it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So yeah.